Hi and welcome to Polly Originals with Fiona Abel Smith. So today we're going to have a bit of fun and we're going to create a little woodland winter scene and we're going to do it as a fridge magnet or this would always make, also make a great card topper or of course if you made it slightly smaller you could make it into a pendant but I'm also going to show you how to put it onto a glass bauble and how to add some colour behind with cutouts so you get to see a nice amount of glow and when the lights go down you get to see all the colours around the background as well. Now doing this technique isn't difficult but it is tricky, it's fiddly um, so it won't be for everyone which is why I've done this version as well. What I would suggest is the amount of clay I'm using gives you enough clay to do both of these, so two of the same scenes from the same amount of clay. So I really would recommend doing this one first, getting the feel of it, getting the hang of it, because when you move it onto a glass bauble, it really does make life quite interesting, trying to get all the little cut-out details in. You'll see what I mean as we go through it. But other than that, it's a fun one to do, and obviously just follow the instructions to do this one, or make up your own design, and just see what comes out as you go along. So let's start by going through the equipment we need for today's project. To make this project, there's not too much in the way of specialist equipment that you need. Polymer clay blade, which is one of these. Craft knife, that's always handy. Something just to add a little bit of um, texture or to put pieces together um, to help you pick pieces up. Something like a, this is a cable needle, one of the shorts or knitting needles, or just some form of tool that you can sort of pick up bits of clay with or press them in to other bits of clay. A small cutter is handy um, just to cut out the shape of the moon. You'll need a round cutter the size you want to create your piece with. I'm using quite a large round cutter for my design. This is seven centimetres, about two and three quarter inches um, diameter. Um, if you've got something similar, that's fine, but just use whatever you have to hand. A piece of tracing paper and a pencil. Certainly you'll need those if you're copying my design. Um, but if you're creating your own design, it's easier just to do it on paper and cut the pieces out. And I'll show what I mean as we go on to that later. And we'll also need a little sheet of paper um, and some form of burnishing tool. You can just use the top of your finger. You can use a roller if you'd want. Um, but something like this, which is stainless steel soap, just acts as a nice burnisher. A smooth stone also works well if you've got one of those. If you want to add some embellishment for the um, stars, you can either add these on at the end, which are the stick-on, peel-off little Diamante crystals, or you can use these which are little pointed backed ones which you can inset into the clay and these are the ones I'm going to use in the project as I go along. If you have a, just a little piece of um, baking parchment or something just to work on or put your spare bits of clay on is quite handy. If you haven't got those then the measuring sheet would work and I'll come on to that in just a second. We're going to work on a tile and we're actually going to work and bake on this tile, so just having a small tile to hand completely flat is good. It doesn't have to be white, any colour you've got is fine. If you're doing a fridge magnet, then obviously having a magnet is handy. These are the um, rare earth magnets and I'll put a link to where I get these from in the details below the video. I like using these because they're very small but very, very strong. And they'll hold your even quite a large piece of clay nicely onto anything. As I mentioned, the measuring sheet just to work on, not to really measure anything on today, but if you want one of those, I get this from www.printablepaper.net and I just laminate them to make it easy to work on. When we bake our piece, I will always tent the whole piece in aluminium foil, just in case the oven spikes whilst baking. It's just normal good practice. And as per normal, I will also use wet wipes or wet tissues to wipe my hands, keep my tools clean as I go along. And I will also use the pasta machine which is dedicated to polymer clay use. If you don't have a pasta machine, then you will simply use then you can simply use a form of small roller and just roll your clay flat and get it nice and flat. And if you use a couple of playing cards either side of your piece of clay and roll it over, you can get some really even, nice thin pieces. I have created this template for you to use um, and this is freely downloadable from my website and I will put a link to that in the details below. 
So that's all you need for doing the fridge magnets and we'll go on to the clay now. Um, any additional bits you need for the bauble I will add as extra details when we get on to doing that later on. So I'll start by going through the clays you need for today's project. Now I'm working in Fimo Soft but all recognised brands of polymer clay will work well for this design and obviously use whatever you've got. If you're someone who has a lot of um, polymer clay then just grab little bits and pieces from what you've got left over because you don't need a lot to make up all the individual colours and you can make each one slightly different by doing so. But I know a lot of you don't have a lot of scrap clay so we're starting from scratch. So for those of you who want to have the clay straight out of the packet this is what we're going to use for today's session. Now this is enough to do at least two of the um, background scenes and I've got an awful lot of black clay here because I'm also going to show you the bauble. So to start with I will do a fridge magnet which is the same way as doing the card topper and we're going to do that one first because it's the easy way of doing it and then I'll take you on to doing the bauble. If you weren't going to do um, a bauble at all then you certainly don't need all this black clay. You need probably about that much only. But to take you through everything we do need and all that's on here. So for the black clay I've actually got three ounces or about 85 grams of this one. The white clay, there's one ounce, um, about 28 grams. The blue, this is the brilliant blue, and I've got half ounce or 14 grams of this one. And then I've got the plum, the apple green and the emerald green. All of these are about quarter of an ounce or seven grams. I've just got a little bit of caramel colour, which is an eighth of an ounce or 3.5 grams, and then a tiny little bit of chocolate. And then depending on whether you're going to do a bauble or whether you're going to do the fridge magnet or the car topper, if you're doing something um, that we're going to put the lights in the back, then translucent, little tiny bit of translucent clay, that's more than enough, is really good. If you're doing something that's not having lights behind, then something like the night glow to put as the moon would work really well. So just small amounts, probably only a couple of grams um, of each of those would do. The other thing you will need if you're doing the card topper or the fridge magnet is a bit of scrap clay and this is just about um, half an ounce or 14 grams and I've got it big enough that it will fit round the circle which is going to be the size that we're going to do our decorative piece. Again if you're doing a bauble you don't need this. Working out the colours, the easiest way I find of doing it is to cut down along the ridges so cut them into pieces, so these each go into sort of 8 ounces, 3.5 pieces, because it's then easy to cut them up from that point on. So having done that, the very top of the sky colour is going to be one of those pieces of white with two of the blue and a little half piece of the black. The Doing the Christmas trees, you're going to keep those two colours as they are, but have one little slice of the black. And then to do all the background colours, the darkest, the one further away from us, the more, most purple, is going to be equal amounts of the plum and the blue. Next one down you're going to use a strip of white and then half a strip of plum, half a strip of blue. A strip of white, a quarter of a strip of blue and a quarter of a strip of purple. Then a strip of white, even less, about half that amount of blue and about a quarter that amount of purple. Going down again half that amount of blue, even tinier amount of purple, and then the last one, tiny, tiny amount of blue, tiny amount of purple. And when they're mixed up, they're going to give you one, two, three, four, five, six colour variations of the purple to do all the background layers of scenery. Now this is where I think if you've already got a whole load of clay that you've used, just find six different colours or six different pieces that are sort of a, a bluey tone of purple as our background. And then two strips just for white we're going to put together. Now all of these colours, when you put them together like this and the white, you then want to condition those all together. And if you're unsure on how to condition polymer clay, I do have a video covering that, which I'll put a link to in the video descriptions below this one. For all of these colours, all I want you to do is just condition these in their individual colours, because we're going to do a Skinner blend with this one and a Skinner blend of those two. So having mixed up all the background colours, we're going to start with our night sky and I'll bring you back when I've got these pieces conditioned. So having got all the colours conditioned, I've put them through on setting number three, which is a medium setting on my machine. And on my machine, naught is thick and a nine is thin. And we're going to do a Skinner bend going from the black through to the blue and into the white. If you're unsure on how to do a Skinner blend, again I have a video on how to do this with a few tips and techniques on Skinner blends and I'll put a link to that in the video description below. And all we're going to do is we're going to chop down diagonally through all of those. And 
and then because the blue bit's a lot bigger we're going to squidge them so they fit like that and then put the black on the end so it fits like that because what we want is a little bit of black and then going into the blue now normally you'd have more of a, a diagonal stripe here but I only want a small amount of black just at the very top of the sky so I'm not putting a diagonal on this one so I'm just going to fold that over and having put it through on setting number three beforehand I'm going to put it on setting number number two so one thicker because we've got four layers of clay and keep putting it through fold first folding bottom to top until we get a nice smooth blend so here's the blend as it's come out and this is still on setting number two so here is the template I've done for you for those who want to follow um, the instructions and have a template obviously just make your own up as you go along if you're confident doing that but I know a lot of you like to follow patterns so this is freely available on my website and I'll put a link to that in the details below the video and I've drawn out here the, the picture as it's going to be finished more or less just to give you a rough idea but then broken it down into all of the background colours roughly the sizes we're going to need for making our Christmas tree and the size of the um, little cottage here as well. So the first thing we're going to do is all the background. So if you get yourself a piece of tracing paper, just trace over um, so you get all your pieces. And I've put numbers on these, so put your numbers on at the same time, one down to six. And then you can chop all your pieces out. So you'll probably want to keep this to hand so you can make sure you're putting them up the right way so we're going to start with number one so I'm going to put him that way up and then we can go straight down onto our piece and put him where I want to put him to get our background colour so I've put our background blend through on setting number five which is a nice thin setting because you don't need very much for whether you're doing a card topper the fridge magnet or the bauble so setting number five is brilliant you will then need to get all the colours of the clay that you've conditioned earlier. So we've got our six colours there. Now, although we've got six colours, you'll notice we've only got one, two, three, four, five layers of landscape, because obviously the sky is the bit we've just done. And the reason we've got six colours is we're going to, we are going to use one of them as the shadow colour for the snow. And I tend to use this one. So we'll then leave us with those five colours. And all five of these, again, need to go through setting number five on the pasta machines they're all going to come out in sheets the same thickness as this one and then all we're going to do is we are simply going to layer up our pieces of um, tissue or our pieces of tracing paper onto them cut round the outside so we've got all the pieces that match on here so I will get that all done I will cut them all out and I'll bring you back when I've got them all ready to put together so here are all my pieces um, ready cut outs take away the tracing paper bits so they're all ready to go. Now because I'm doing the fridge magnet and I want it to be nice and flat I've put my scrap clay on my tile. The scrap clay has gone through setting number two on my pasta machine which is just the right size for my magnet to fit in. Now what I've got um, to replace where my magnet's going to go is I have made a little piece of the two-part molding compound which will sit in where the magnet will go and if you want to know how I did this and how I did my little cutout and made it the right shape then all of that is covered in the tutorial I did on the fridge magnets for Halloween on the spooky fridge magnets so I will again put a link to that on the in the video description so the first thing I should do is just very roughly just give myself a slight mark of where I'm going to chop out my circle so that I can find somewhere where I want my fridge magnet to go so he'll want to go towards the top and in the middle. And I will then just very simply chop out a place where he will sit. And I can now fit in the bit of plastic that's going to sit in there instead and of course that will pop out once the piece is baked and then I can just glue in the magnet afterwards and then it will make a perfect fridge magnet that sits nice and flush. If you were doing a card topper just do a very thin layer of scrap clay probably um, 
certainly no thicker than the clay you're going to put on it so setting five six or even seven on your pasta machine it's just a nice um, soft piece, a nice thin piece but again start working on the tile you're going to bake on so that you don't have to move it off once you start getting your pieces in place so now I know where I'm going to start I can simply start placing my pieces on because I've got that rough template where I marked with a circle so I can see where my pieces need to sit and then just build them up There will always be some slight discrepancy because of course we've traced and we've cut. So where there's gaps, just gently push them together with your finger. Then get a clean piece of the tracing or the wax or some other form of paper and then just burnish on the top until all your pieces are nicely joined together. You could just burnish with your finger, but then of course it's easier to do it with a tool. Small round circular movements because I'm not wanting to spread it out too much around here but I just wanted to get all those joins nice and seamless once you're done remove the paper and we're ready to start building our trees we're going to create some fir trees by making a very simple Skinner blend tree cane. So we're going to take our two forms of green, the apple green and the emerald green, put them together um, so they come out roughly equal sizes and then just do a very simple Skinner blend with these two. Diagonally cut and then fold it to put them together so you've got all green on one side and all green on the other and then constantly fold bottom to top to do a Skinner blend until you end up with a nice smooth blend. So that should come out something like that when you're done. And all I'm going to do now is I'm going to chop that into two pieces, lay one on top of the other. And as before, this went through on setting number two on my pasta machine because I had the four layers of clay um, that I'd just cut up. So I'm going to put it back through setting number two that way to give myself a nice longer piece. And once I've got that longer piece, I'm going to put that back through the pasta machine on my lowest usable setting. So for me that's setting number nine so I get myself a really nice long strip but just go down to your lowest setting that you know isn't going to shred your clay. So having got our nice long thin strip we're just simply going to roll this from the light end, lightest green end up. I'm not worried about the fact that it's all uneven at this end because it's a natural thing we're doing the tree. If each little bit comes out slightly different that's absolutely fine. But simply Roll it up and I'm rolling it nice and tight to make sure there's no air gaps as we go. So once he's all rolled up, we're going to get that one um, block of the black clay, put it through the pasta machine on a nice thin setting. So this has gone through on number six of mine. So whatever setting is thin enough that it allows you to put one wrap of the black all the way around. So I'm just going to cut that slightly more to size, chop off any excess, chop off any excess either side and just one nice thin layer around the outside. If you ever when you're cutting things find a bit where it doesn't quite meet just simply patch it. That's all you need to do. And now we're going to chop this down into as neat a quarters as you can make it. Don't worry if yours aren't overly neat because as I said before this is a natural thing and if it's going to come together and if each bit is slightly different that's absolutely fine and then all we're going to do is we're going to pull the black up slightly at the edges and then squidge by pressing down that way two pieces together and then put all four of your pieces together and all I'm doing is I'm pressing just at the bottom because I'm going to make this slightly longer just pressing in at the bottom keeping it sort of oblong in shape and then when you chop down and put those two together that is going to form one part of your tree. So now's the time to get the template again. 
because what we're needing to do, we need to make one, two, three, four pieces from this one cane. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make it down so it's about this size. So by doing that, all we're doing is pressing down the side. And there's a natural tendency that this top goes in just slightly. As you can see here, we don't want it to go to a point because it's going to be flat topped still, but we'll just spread it out until it's got to about that size. If it makes it easier, of course you can always trace these and cut them out so that you've then got a piece that you can fit on the front to make sure that it's the right size as you're going. When you're nearly there, just pull a little bit of the top over. Chop probably no more than a third down and see what you've got. And you can just pull, pull the bottoms out, just flare them out ever so slightly. So that's the bottom part of your Christmas tree. And now you're going to do exactly the same, reducing this down to do the second and third part. And then the last part is just going to be a little triangle on the top. So this last one you can actually pull up to a nice taut triangle right at the very top. And there you have your rough Christmas tree shape. So all we're going to do when we create our trees is take them all apart, put them on one side, and we're going to cut thin slices and put them together to create our trees. So I've just chopped off some pieces there, ready to use. And then, so you can either follow the template or not, but what we're going to do, we're only going to do the ones on this side, just to start with. So we've got one at the background, and the ones that are further away have only got three tiers to make them appear smaller, and the ones in the foreground have got four tiers. And it's nice to put your first bit so it goes slightly above the top of your hills. He's just going to sit there and you can just make sure that they're sitting down nicely into the background just by giving a little bit of a roll and then the one that's going to be in the forefront is just going to go right over the top and he'll start slightly further down and we'll end with him going right off the edge but don't worry about that because we'll neaten that up later Again, give that one a little roll. Now any tree trunk on this one would actually be about here, so we don't need to put a tree trunk on this one. This one does need a little tree trunk. So take that tiny piece of chocolate brown we had right at the start, again get that nicely conditioned and put it through on setting number five. And then we are literally just going to cut us out ourselves out a tiny trunk shape. fit him in place. So that's the trees on that side. And what we need to do now obviously is put some trees on here. But before we put the trees on we need to put the house sort of in position so we can put these trees behind it. So to do the house get your caramel clay and get it conditioned. So using the template I've chopped myself out a piece of caramel for the main part of the house and a piece of white for the roof. 
and then we just need to chop out some little windows. So I'm just going to do this by hand. Leave a place where you think the door is going to go. So I'm going to do a window on that side. And a window on that side. And then put the house where you think your house wants to be. So I'm putting mine along so that, that line there. I haven't pressed him down hard if you notice. The house roof is going to go there. And again, I'm not pressing it down hard. And the house roof overlaps the side of the cottage. So now we've got that, we can start thinking about where we can put the trees in behind. So I'm going to take some of these pre-cut pieces I had. So we'll start the first one about here. I'm going to lift up this white, just pull it off slightly. And then another one's going to be to one side of it. I want this one to be behind the house, so I'm just going to chop off the side of it there. We're not going to see that bit because we've got a tree that's going to come on the, on the front. And then we can put the roof back on. And the last tree wants to just cover over this edge of the house, so I'm going to start it about there. It's going to come down and go over. So it might go a little bit over one of those windows. Just bear that in mind. Do what you want to do. And when he comes down, there will, of course, be a little tree trunk. So we'll add the tree trunk in. And give all those a little bit of a roll. And the rest of it is really just a case of adding whatever detail you want to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is to add a chimney. I'm going to do that out of the same caramel colour. And that's literally just a little oblong. Whichever size you want to make yours. Put mine about there. I'm going to put a door on the front of the house and that's going to come out of the chocolate coloured clay. nice to give the eye somewhere to go up to the house so I'm going to draw myself little guidelines for a path going up to the house and then it's also nice to have some little bushes and for the little bushes I'm just going to take some little leftover bits of the um, green fir tree we were doing push that and roll it into a round chop it into two or three bits, or even four. Push those together, some one way up, some the other way up. Push them back. Squash them slightly flat. And now, we should be able to take some little slices and put them down the side of the house to start with, going taller and then shorter, and that'll be like a little bit of a hedge down the side of the house. So we'll start with the snow shadow, which is that little bit of extra blue, slightly different blue colour we had, which we haven't used. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to roll it into a long sort of snake of clay, a longish sausage, very small pieces. If you have an extruder and wanted to use your extruder dies to give yourself nice small pieces, that's a good way of doing it. And having got a piece the right size, I'm just going to lay that piece on the bottom of the snow topped roof. I like to have a piece that runs along the bottom of the house and along the hedge. 
we're going to have a little piece at the bottom of the chimney and then at the moment a little piece at the top of the chimney and then we're also going to have little pieces just marking out this path where I put my line as an indication as to where the edge of the path is. And then with the edge of my cable needle, I'm just going to pull that little bit of shadow colour upwards at the bottom of the chimney, just blend it downwards at the top, and then just give a bit of texture on my cottage, make it look almost like it's some sort of thatched roof underneath. I'm just going to draw the needle down just to give a bit of texture on that roof. With these colours here, I'm just going to blend this one down into the path this way because if you've got a moon coming from here the shadow is going to hit and the shadow will be on this side so smooth it down into the path and then the same on that way smoothing it down into the path and now we need to go onto the white clay to add some of the highlights it's actual snow color so this is just pure white exactly the same thing just roll it into nice thin little strips of clay. So we're going to have a little bit on top of the chimney and then on every fir tree we're just going to go across the bottom of each of the sections with a little bit of white So I'm going to go off the picture then. And then with each piece, all I'm going to do is just pull it up ever so slightly to make it look as though it's sitting on the bottom of those branches. And I'm going to repeat that on all the rest of those trees. Before I do that, I'm just going to put a bit of detail around the windows because I need to do this first before I put the um, white on, particularly this bit where it's um, around. And you don't have to do this, it's a bit of a fiddly bit, but if you want to, again, all I'm going to do is roll very thin pieces and just do an outline around the windows. And then if you can, with a teeny tiny little piece, you can use that just to create sort of like a cross pattern across the window. It just look like it's window panes. Because the little bit of the lighter clay will show through on the back. So once you've got all your lines ready on your um, pieces, we also need some bits just on the very top. So for that, easiest way I find to do it is just get a little bit of a roll, put it on the very tip top, and then just pull it down with your the end of your needle. So again, do that for all the tops of those. Then I'm just going to blend in the bottom of this shadow snow underneath the house. And blend it smooth or put some texture in depending on what to do. I'm just going to push it up slightly as well in and amongst around those bushes to make it look slightly as if they've got more form. And then we're going to put a little bit of snow over the top of these, a little bit of the white snow on the top of this blue line this side and this blue line this side. And then I'm going to do tiny bits outlining the windows and the top of the door and a little bit underneath.
and we're nearly there. So I like to put some little footsteps so when they're first coming out of the house they're quite a long way away but as they come out so they look as so they get bigger and for these ones you don't need to do any more than just create the little dents inside. So the very last thing to do is to decide if we want a moon and stars. To make a moon I've got a bit of the night glow clay chopped out a circle put him into place and then I am going to go with a tiny little crystal silvers so I can just put some little stars in literally pick them up on my finger and pop them in wherever I want them. And because this one's going to be a fridge magnet I don't need to worry about having to glue them in afterwards. Same with a card topper they should be fine. If you're doing it on something like a piece of jewellery then obviously you'd want to pop them out afterwards and re-glue them back in just to make sure they were nicely secure. Down there, do one down there and I think we'll have one over the other side. One down in there. Put your cutter back round chop nicely down through all the layers and you're left with either a nice card topper or a fridge magnet and we're simply going to bake that as per usual we'll tent the whole tile in foil to protect your clay should the oven spike during baking and bake according to the manufacturer's instructions for the brand of clay you are using so there we go, there's the fridge magnet out of the oven and finished baking. So all I've done is i pulled out the little bit of um, blue that was sitting in the inside and popped the magnet in so I can glue that in and then just check whether or not it needs any sanding around the outside. So that's how you do the fridge magnets and the card toppers. So let's move on to that bauble. So if you want to decorate a bauble and make it one with the lights on the inside, you need one of these, ones with the open back. And then all we're going to do is going to put the decoration on the front and then when it's finished we're going to pop some little bottle lights on the inside and that will light it up from the inside. So additional things you need apart from one of these and these are glass and I'll put the um, reference as to where I got mine from in the details below the video. You also then need as well as your normal um, large cutter to do the design itself you need a cutter that's just slightly bigger than the aperture because what we're going to do is we're going to cut a piece of felt that size and then we're going to use that to close off the aperture to stop the light coming out the back of the bauble. I'm going to decorate mine using the double glitter technique that I did in the star decoration video so I'll put details and a link to that video below so you can follow how to do that. And then when we get to the point where we're creating the, um, the colours coming through the back you can either use translucent clay and alcohol ink and I'll go into that a bit more detail later on or you can use your permanent markers or you can use glass paints themselves and if you do that then obviously you need a little paintbrush. Having cut out your circle of felt you'll need something to glue it onto the glass so I'm using the two on the two part epoxy glues but just use something that's going to fix the felt to the glass. To mix the glue I'm just going to use a small piece of paper, this is a grease proof paper and a cocktail stick just to mix and add it in. To bake our ornament or bauble I'm going to use a bowl, this just happens to be metal, metal one, any um, deep bowl will do, just something to protect and hold your bauble in place. And all I've done is I've taken a strip of ordinary white card, torn it in two and just curled the pieces so that the glass has something nice to sit against. And then when we're doing our stars we're going to need a teeny tiny cutter and some form of um, needle or a blunted end of something and that's just going to create tiny little dots to create little stars in the back of our scene. But we need to find somewhere where we're going to put our picture. So what I will do is I will place the same templates that I used for my picture on the glass and then with a permanent marker or something that's going to give you a nice line, just a thin line, I'm just going to draw all the way around the glass so that I know exactly where I need to put my piece on. And that just gives you a nice thin line and a rough base as to where it's going to go. Now because we've gone down the outside this is now going to be bigger than our actual circle which acts in our favour in some respects. 
so I have already cut out all my pieces that I need to go on. And because this is going to be wider, I just need to pull them ever so slightly wider. Don't worry too much about going over the top because as we put our pot bits on we're not going to put them next to each other this time we're going to leave a gap in between and it's this gap we leave that will show the lights through on the inside so I'm going to put my piece up to the top and just stretch it slightly over till it sort of meets that black outer line so this one is going to sit inside there I'm leaving a gap so you can see there the gap that I'm leaving and just repeat doing that all the way down if you need to um, widen a gap at any point just use the edge of your craft club blade just to knead it on and we want quite a nice wide edge you can push it closer with your fingers you can pull it further apart with your craft knife and just work your way down to we've got all the base on there with these gaps in between around each layer Okay, as you see, I can really pull the clay quite a lot to get it to stretch down to the size I want, and that's why we left it on that same setting number five, so quite um, a decent thickness, so we could pull and manipulate. I also cut off a few bits towards the end where the clay is, we're getting too close to each other. And don't worry overly, because we can always go back and change this, but if you've got it so you've roughly got the idea of all these gaps, then that is perfect. And then we start doing the trees in exactly the same way, just as we did on our first piece. So you can use the template if you wish. So don't forget the template. So we're going to do these two trees on this side first. And now the principle is we also want an outline round our trees and we're going to get our outline by chopping down wide, chopping down next to where the tree is and I always work on just doing little bits at a time and just pulling the clay out and then carry on going down here. You only need to do just around the very outside of them and go slightly wider than you think you would need to go because it's amazing how the clays join up as you carry on working and going further down your piece. And I'm going to go all the way down, round the outside of this, all the way down to here and along the underneath. And I'll bring you back when I've got that bit done. Okay, so you can see there I've got done down this side, down the bottom and all the way around the outside edge. So this is what I meant when I said it's, it's not easy, it's quite a tricky thing to do. It does take a bit of time and patience to get that done. But having done that, we're then going to put the house and the trees on this side in exactly the same way as we did before. And again, each thing we're going to outline around the outside of. So I'll bring you back when I've done that and show you where I've put the outlines and where I haven't. So you can see here I've cut down round the outside of the trees and just round the outside of the roof and I haven't done on the inside here of the trees because I want the house to be the main focal point here but I have done the underneath of that tree there. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to chop out the windows and this means going down through all the layers of clay because we want to get down to the glass. So just chop yourself easy little rectangular shapes and pop both layers of clay out. And obviously if you're up against the tree like I am on this side, just curve round where the tree shape is. And pop that out. We then need to do, as we did before, have a little path which starts small and then gets wider 
as you go away. And this time for the footprints in the snow, again they'll start off small, so just mark them in roughly where you want them to go. But then actually press right down through till you can see down through to the glass. And they'll get progressively smaller as they go towards the house. So they end up as nothing more than just little dots. If you're ever unsure, you can always have a look through the inside and see where your lines are that you're starting to pull out the information from. And on that, I'm just going to go down the side of the house as well, just so I can outline him in a bit of brown. So I'll just quickly take that piece out. Okay, so now it's just a case of doing exactly as we did before with the um, fridge magnet and the car topper. We're going to put on the outline for the windows and put a crisscross in the middle. We're going to put the shadow of the snow. We're going to put a, a chimney on, show s snow shadow up there, all the snow around the sides of the trees, put little tree trunks on. I'll cut around the outside of the tree trunks as well. And then we'll put the two layers of snow, the snow shadow and the white for the um, borders there or the path and then we'll add a little bit in for some um, hedging there so all of that is exactly the same as we do for the fridge magnet so I'm just going to get it all done and I'll bring you back when I've got that all sorted and you'll see where we are at that point okay so we've I've finished all the whites doing it all round and I've put the white above the foliage, all on the Christmas trees, around the door, around the path. And the last thing I've done with the path is where the white and purple meet, I've already done this bit, is with the blunt part of my craft knife, I'm just going in between the white and the purple and just creating the shallowest of lines so that you can't really see it with the eye, but it will just create a little bit of a light source when it's baked. So it's very, very fine, but when you look on the inside, you should just about to be able to see those lines from the path where they come through. Check that your footprints are still showing. Go back on those if necessary. A little bit where it cuts through to the glass. And then I've gone around, make sure that all my lines are okay. And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to put a moon in and a few stars. Now the moon, I'm going to use translucent clay. And I've done got myself a little bit of that translucent. Put it through on a thin setting on the pasta machine. This has gone through on setting number seven, so you can see it really is quite clear. So you can sort of like see things through it. And I'm just going to cut out, using the same cutter we did with the fridge magnet, cut out a place where the moon will go. Take that piece out, cut a piece of the translucent, and we'll just slot him in place. And if you then use the end of your needle to sort of push that around and push it into place, wherever you dig in with the needle will actually show through slightly brighter and will give the moon a little bit of texture as well, a little bit of coloration as it goes. So to make the rest of the stars, all we need to do is to have some small cutters for the slightly larger stars, and I'll put a link where to get these online. And then I'm just using a blunt end of a needle to create the smallest ones. Um, and for the small ones, all we're going to do is we're literally just going to press that in and give it a bit of swell till it actually makes a hole. And obviously for the larger ones, I don't want too many of these, probably just have about three. Just literally dig in. If you're lucky, it'll pull straight out. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. And then I'm going to put loads and loads of these little ones in. And you can put as many or as few in as you like. And don't forget to have a look on the reverse so you can see where they're all looking through. Check that all your lines are open and you can see them quite clearly. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're just going to by hand neaten up this circular shape. Now it probably won't be still completely circular. Um, but just go around as best you can and just even it off. When you're happy with your shape, get the bowl, whatever you're planning on baking in. So I've just got a couple of bits of card in there just to sit it nicely in. And then I'm going to cover the whole thing and tent it in foil as we normally do, just protect your piece should the oven spike during baking and bake according to the manufacturer's instructions for the brand of clay you are using. 
So whilst that piece is baking, I have started on the background clay. And what I've done is I've done the double glitter technique that I used in the star decoration video. So there's no point me going over the whole thing again because you can simply look at that video. So I will do a link to the exact bits you need to look at in the video description below this one. And I've put it through on setting number five because that's the same setting as the other clay that we've used. And I've done the two blues so there's not a lot of contrast and you can only just see the patterns going but it's a lovely shimmery glittery effect you've got. So when the baubles come out and it's all cool and we're ready to go you need to firstly get a piece that's going to be long enough to effectively wrap around the whole piece that's what I aimed for and that's why I used the whole two ounces of clay in this one so it's a whole small pack of clay to give myself enough that I knew would cover around so logic would say cut a hole the same size as your pieces there and it'll fit round however the clay is heavy and it tends to fall so the easier thing to do is to get a cutter that's quite a good amount smaller than the one of your actual piece and all we're going to do is we're going to write in the middle cut away a hole. And I did work on my measuring sheet when I was doing this because it just makes it easier to peel off. I've also still got loads of glitter around including quite a large amount of spare glitter um, so that when we have to fill in gaps when we cut down through things I've got a lot that just to hand so I can get my finger onto. And this just starts to fit round. So put it up close at one edge and then just gradually work your way around and it's amazing how far it will stretch. And if you do the hole too big then it stretches too far and you just simply can't fit it up to and next to your clay. So spend a bit of time making sure it's nicely up and against the edge. And then you can, with your needle, as always, just put it right up so you're going to get a nice neat finish up to the area of your little scene. And once that piece is on, then you can start completing and filling out the rest. And all you do is press bits flat and wherever it's not flat, just cut down, fold across until the piece next to it is flat then chop that piece off. If it needs to be brought slightly further up, just pull it slightly further up, but small gaps. We will simply roll over at the end, again with your needle. And if you've got any large bits where the black clay is showing through, you can see where the line is, this is where all the excess glitter comes in handy. And you just rub it on so it fills up any of the gaps. So we're going to continue doing that, covering the whole of our piece with the glitter sheet. When you've gone over it and you're happy there's no air bubbles, any air bubbles push towards this middle bit or towards the outer bit, then fold the clay in around the aperture and either with a craft knife or with your tissue blade just cut off the excess around the inside. Pull all the clay out, make sure you haven't got any mess or any clay over your front pattern and as before get your bowl with two bits of card in and pop your bauble in face down. Try to avoid any of the glitter sitting directly onto the outside, particularly of metal, because it makes the glitter go um, silver coloured rather than taking on its colour in the oven. And as before, bake according to the manufacturer's instructions for the brand of clay you are using. Once your um, bauble has finished and it's out of the oven, it's time 
to add the detail on the inside where all those lines are so that when we put the lights inside it shines through with a colour. And there's various different ways you can do this and just use whatever you have to hand. If you have some translucent clay and some alcohol inks, then just take a small amount of clay, sort of probably half of that per colour, make it nice and thin, put a single drop of alcohol ink on and then mix it up and you end up with quite a nice translucent thin sheet and all we'd do with that is we'd add a little bit of liquid clay on the inside of where we wanted it to go and then cut thin strips and lay it on the inside and rebake. So that's one option for you. If you have permanent markers then they work well. Just check if you've got a piece of um, acetate or something, just have a look first see how nice and bright they're going to be and you want something that's quite got quite a lot of colour um, so that it will really show up um, when the lights are behind so I've got a couple of makes there um, they work very well as permanent markers and again all you do is you turn it on the inside and we're holding it so you can see where you're going just with the pen just go along the different lines and add the lines in as you're going another alternative is paints that are used for glass and colour wise I will normally do yellow behind the stars, green around the edges of the trees, if I've got several different colours purples then going down to blues then going down to aquas behind the snow, orange behind the windows and then a little bit of brown by the trunks. So if I start with the um, purple just for the the top bit there and I'll just show you how I do the glass paint so I'm just shaking my paints and I need very little. I'm going to put my bauble up so I can see which bit I'm doing and I'm just going to do this very top bit here of the hills and because you don't need very much I just use the bit that's actually gone into the lid and then simply dab it across where you want the line to be because I don't want too much so I want to be able to do all the different colours as I go what you can then hopefully see is that when you have a light on the inside you can then see where that blue line is and then just repeat for all the different colours until you've got all the lines filled in and I'll bring you back when I've done that. Once you've got all the background colours in and they're dried then get your piece of felt that you cut out that's larger than the aperture. Simply cut these into this into quarters And then each quarter is going to have a little bit of glue on the outer side and then it's just going to stick on the inside so it creates that quarter shape so that it's an opening that you can push your lights into but it will just sort of hide most of the light from the back of the bauble once the lights are inside and on. I tend to leave the felt just poking out proud whilst the glue di dries and then once it's dried you can just fold those in and they create a nice neat opening to put your lights in and out. So I'll bring you back when that's dried, we've got the lights inside and we can see how the final piece looks. So there we go, I've turned the lights down a little bit low so you can start to see the colours as they've come through and you can see how it then glows in the dark with all the lights that come through. I've just added a little bit of ribbon just to finish the piece off. So that's it, that's today's project finished. As I said, this not so easy, a little bit tricky, but this one's nice and fun and easy to do. So have fun and experiment. And of course, I've only done the one centre picture here. You could put the picture the whole way around the side of the bauble. You could put little cutouts into the glitter surround to make extra little stars going the whole way around. Just have fun and experiment. There's so much you can do on these glass baubles, cutting out the bits of clay and adding a little bit of um, coloured translucent clay or um, glass paints behind. Thank you so much for watching and as always a special thank you to those of you who subscribe. It really does mean a lot and of course it means you get notification of when I upload my next video. I think that's it for now. See you next time. Bye. <laughs>